Hey guys, Cam here from Your Guitar Academy. And feel quick, like today we're gonna to be looking at the whole tone scale, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I really didn't have any clue how to use the whole tone scale. I remember learning about it like at school um, and I was like, I have no idea how this is. I remember it just sounds like Disney or if you've ever played Zelda, it'll sound like when you open a chest. Which is a pretty cool party trick anyway to do. Um, we should only do it in two strings. Um, but essentially the whole tone scale is, if you know as much as a whole and a half tone. So like if you to go from the first fret to the second fret, that's a half tone. And then if you to go from the first fret to the third fret, so you skip one, that is a whole tone, boop, boop, boop. And so you do that. So if you to do it on one string, start on the open E string, you've got zero, two, which is a pretty cool magical sound and scale. Um, but yeah, it sort of doesn't really have a home because there's no like semitones to add any tension or resolve. It's just kind of nice and open, which is really nice, but it can be like, where do I use this? And I didn't really know anywhere until recently. I did a bit of research. And generally, there's loads of other places you can use it, but it works quite nicely just over a five chord because in the whole tone scale, the intervals that you've got are root, two, three, sharp four, sharp five, <laughs> yeah, sharp five, um, flat seven, and then back to root. I mean, you could say flat six, so it could be however you want to do it. You've just got a whole tone between all of them. So yeah, zero, um, root, two, three, sharp four, sharp five, flat six, um, flat seven, root, and there you've got it. So it's not quite as many notes as usual scale. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it'd be a hexatonic scale, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, and it's quite a weird one to memorize on the fretboard, as really there's only actually two ways to play this scale. Um, you either start on E, um, or you start on F. Because since it's just every other note, if you do, the other scale is just the ones in between the gaps of those. So you don't need to remember tons of different shapes. The ones, it, there's not really any shapes anyway for this one, but it's quite easy to remember. Um, because everything's sort of diagonal from each other. Um, let's have a little look at just maybe how you go from C to C on the high E string to start off with. Um, and so we just think of the interval. So we'll start on C, go to our second on the 10th fret of the E string. So then we go to the A string and we go seven, nine, 11. We go to the D string, eight, 10, and then we go to the G string, seven, nine. And then we go to the B string, seven, nine, 11. And then we go eighth fret on the high string. Pretty cool. Um, and as you might have noticed playing through there, it's basically every string that you go, you change to, you're using the other frets. So on the E string, you know, if I'm using, you know, all the even frets, so 0, 2, 6, 8, 10, 12, on the next string down the A string, I will be using all the odd frets. I'll be using 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. And then once I go up another string, the D string, I'll be doing all the even. Um, and then on the G and B string there, since they're tuned to, um, you know, uh, a fourth? I don't know. What would it be? Where's G, G to B? A third, sorry, not a fourth. All the other ones are choose to fourth. Um, they're just the same. So they're, they're both odd if you start on even. So there's no awkward jump in there, and then we're back to all the even notes. And then if you're playing the other whole tone scale, it's vice versa. So it's just odd frets, even frets, odd frets, even, even, odd. Pretty, pretty nice and simple if you think of it that way. Uh, you just think, okay, I'll play 
odd frets or I'll play even frets. Um, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's have a little look at the lick. Um, and so the lick that I've got, it would be sort of resolving to a C major from the five, because as we've discussed in the whole tennis scale, we've got a major three and we've got a flat seven. We don't have a five, but over a dominant seven sort of chord or five chord, you've got a bit of freedom with really what you're playing, but you've got a good amount of chord tones there to keep the ears going. Um, and so it looks a little like this. So you, maybe if you're doing two for one, you'd have the two. Go to the five. And then I've come to just before I'm about to go to that C major and I'm a semitone away. I slide up to resolve to that one. On the major seven. Um, so here you go. So that was a pretty quick one, uh, but you can see it's got kind of that kind of jazzy rhythm accents to it. Um, and you're, you don't really need to think about, you know, what core tension, because it's all about that openness tension and then just the result back to that one. So it's nice, you know, if you just got to think about where you're going to end up with this one. Um, and so quickly, the frets I've got would be nine, on the E string, 13, 11, and then go down to the B string and we go 12th to 10th fret. Down to the G string, same. 12, 10, eight. Then we go down to the D string and you know, we're gonna be hitting the odd frets because we're just on the even ones. So ninth fret on the D string. Then we go back to our even frets on the A string, 10th fret to 8th fret on the A string, and then on the low E string, we're gonna go uh, from 11, 9, 7, and then resolve up on semitone, back into C really nicely. And yeah, because we're with the G. That's how I know sort of what what of the two whole tone scales I'll be doing. Because that G is on an even fret of the, you know, A string. So I just know I'll be doing the odd and even on the respective strings. Um, so there you have it. So give that a go just when you're playing over a five chord and it'll hopefully spice it up a bit. Um, but there's loads of different applications. Just have fun with it because it's such a weird sound and scale really cool i mean you've also and then the other one you've got is a half turn it's just chromatic but yeah and to do the little zelda thing as well all you got to do is get your fingers on the uh, b and g the g and b strings and you just go like three five on the g string and then three and then five on the b string and you can sort of speed it up Do that either going up in the same tone or the whole tone. Just fun. I don't know how the end, but did, 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 did. I have that goes, but you might be able to figure out. Well, there you go. So that is a little introduction to the whole scale and like a whole tone scale and a little lick you can use with it. Um, but just get kind of used to how that feels and try and just, yeah, think about that different odd and even strings. Um, on the fretboard, it's nice and easy. So if you're starting even one last time, you're starting on even frets, it's even, odd, even, odd, odd, even. And then it's just flip the other way around. So if it's odd, you're starting on, it's odd, even, odd, even, even, odd. As simple as that. So give it a go and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to get access to the interactive tab for this link, join our YJ Club. Plus, if your guitar learning is moving slower than you like, or you're struggling for focus, our YJ Club is exactly what you need. With custom learning pathways, an awesome website, progress tracking, and access to our community of students and mentors, you have everything you need to achieve your guitar goals. We'll see you there.